Hello and welcome to the 37th episode of Growing Up Geek, the weekly podcast for geek entertainment and nostalgia. My name is Brad and I am joined by my brother Rob. That's me. You are no longer homeless, as I understand. Well, nearing that. You will have an abode. There's three bedrooms and there's only two of us and we're thinking, hey, how about we use that third bedroom as a kind of dedicated rock band room? Oh, I love it. Yeah, because we, we both have Xbox 360s. Yeah. So I'm like, why don't we just like have one room just ready to go so we don't have to like lug everything out? Love it. Exciting times, man, and I'm, I'm happy to be part of them. Well, good. I'm glad that you have a place. Yeah. A place to call your own. And so uh, from that, let's launch into geek news. Uh, we'll start with you. Yeah. What is your favorite geek news story this week? Well, something that kind of jumped out at me is Google's Android operating system. This is kind of Google's entry into the cell phone market. Right. It's a smartphone operating system, sort of like Windows Mobile or, or you know, the popular like iPhone stuff, but it's different because it's free. Right. They uh, just announced today Android Market. <laughs> yeah. I love the name. Yeah. So futuristic. Exactly. It's like, hey, mom, I'm just going to run out to the Android market. No, I'll be safe, honey. You, know, you need anything? Any cybernetic limbs or anything? Watch out for those Blade Runners. But so this is like competing with Apple a little bit here. Yeah, I'm pretty. it's pretty direct, actually. Yeah. The App Store did what everybody wanted, which was open the iPhone up for kind of user-generated content. Yeah, and they're selling a bajillion of those apps. Exactly. But not everyone is happy with the App Store, especially developers. Apparently, there's this kind of unknown sort of approval process that they have to go to before they can get their application posted to the App Store. Yeah, they've got a tight control on it. Yeah, they do. And some people aren't sure because there's there's some applications that are definitely shady that make mm. it through. And then there's mm. other ones that seem, you know, all right that don't. Google kind of made a point to say, you know, look, it's not a store, it's a market. But, you know, I, I think if there's one company that can kind of take on Apple in terms of ingenuity, it's Google. Right. So I'm excited to see it. And, and maybe come February, I'll be picking up an Android phone. Do you think that Google is going to try to get into the operating system market through the cell phone? Yeah, I, I don't know. They, they might at some point just say, hey, here's an operating system, you know, to freely load onto whatever computer you have. Yeah, Geez, imagine if their computer OS ends up being free. Well, yeah, I mean, because Linux does that already, and who knows? I mean, yeah, Google always poised to take over the world. Indeed, with Indeed. the Android market. <laughs> yeah, with the Android market. Oh, it's starting to come together, the uh, you know cybernetic uh, holocaust. Yes, this has been your Jack Van Impey moment. <laughs> Wow. Prophecy combo. Boom. <laughs> Boom. 100%. Uh, all right. So that's my news. Brad, what news has been interesting you this week? Uh, well, let's see. Castle Crashers. Oh. Absorbing my mind <laughs> yeah. uh, this past week. Uh, Castle Crashers came out on Wednesday. I downloaded it. Okay. This is an old school 2D brawler. I will give you my old school review, okay. uh, which is graphics. <laughs> beautiful. Music. Awesome. Fun factor. Yeah. Fun. Hey. <laughs> a joy to play. I love Castle Crashers. Um, I, I'm really, I was excited about this game, and I'm glad to see that it turned out the way everybody, I think, was hoping it would be. Uh, you got to play it. In fact, five minutes after getting through the demo, I bought it, and uh, Amber actually jumped in, and she enjoyed it. I did not expect the two of us to be able to play it together, but compared to Alien Hominid, it, it's much easier, huh. and especially when you have multiple people, so... Um, if you like old school brawlers, get this. I was super excited to see the return of the flashing right arrow <laughs> that, you know, points whenever you clear an area. Sweet. You've got all those old tropes of the genre, you know, but done better. For example, when the two characters go to the opposite sides of the screen, it zooms out to show more of the area. Yeah. And, again, I can't tell you how happy I was to actually shout, get the chicken! You know, <laughs> stuff that we used to yell. Highly, highly recommend that. Yeah, man, I can't wait to maybe hop on live and, uh, and play that with you someday. Yeah, you got to. Uh, you got four different knights that you play as. Mm -hmm. uh, blue Knight has ice, Orange Knight has fire, etc., etc. Now, the downside is it is repetitive. You do fight the same enemy a bajillion times, but uh, mm -hmm. Fun Factor 5.0 says <laughs> Game Pro. With the big electrocuted face, man. I, I will say, this seems to be the year that retro is being done right. So, um, 2D Brawlers apparently are back. <laughs> Sweet. 
All right, and now let's just see if we can get adventure games back. How about? I know, seriously. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, that's a dead genre," but it doesn't have to be. No, not not in the least. So, uh, not on that subject. But uh, moving on to our main topic of discussion this week, we yeah. are going to review a stone cold book. Woo! You know, there's always those conversations after a movie comes out that are like, "Oh, well, did you read the book?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> we attempted to do that this week in anticipation of the upcoming film of Coraline, which is a story by Neil Gaiman Mm -hmm. about a little girl who lives in a house, and the house has lots of tenants. She gets bored, and she decides to go just sort of looking around, and uh, she stumbles upon a part of her house that is identical in every way to the rest of her house, except for some freaky differences, which I won't reveal here, because this book is so much about discovery, Um, but... Rob, you read the the graphic novel version. Yeah, uh, I definitely am enjoying it. It's it's got a fun, you know, like you said, exploratory side to it. I can't help to draw a lot of correlations between this and Narnia, Alice in Wonderland, uh, Spirited Away. Yeah, it's not at all talking down to kids, but it is kind of embracing their nature. Right being curious, wanting to play games, and the importance of doing something that's seemingly unimportant. Right. Like, it makes me happy to to see stuff like this whenever you're taken away to a different world and and to just kind of learn how it functions. Yeah, Yeah, the people in the... To to not give too much away, the people in the other side of her house, the the other version of her house, pronounce her name correctly. Right. And that's the, that's a sign something's actually off. Yeah, exactly. They, they're they aware of what's going on, and they're completely invested in her and aware of her. Yeah. I was surprised to see that the artwork wasn't a little more Tim Burton-esque. It's funny that you mentioned that, because the film that's going to be coming out is by the director of The Nightmare Before Christmas, and it's going to be claymation in that similar style, you know, large heads and things. And uh, the drawings of the other mother in the book are really right. freaky. The uh, yeah. the version in the in the graphic novel you're reading much more uh, human and realistic. But oh, did did that? Fr- I just want to know did that creep you out because that was a yeah. big thing that you know I couldn't wait <laughs> till you got to that part. Yeah, I mean absolutely. The the, the appearance was. I think it was just disturbing okay. enough, you know, like, it's not monstrous, yeah. it's just you you notice something's right. off, and then you look closer, and you, you start to see it, and then it starts to creep into you what you might be looking okay. at, and it's interesting, actually, that their girls always seem to have a friend cat yeah. <laughs> in these things, you know? In fact, Castle Crashers has a Cheshire-looking cat in it, too, so I guess that seems to be the thing to do. Cats always seem to be friends of, of girls in a in a sort of mischievous way right and it's clear that neil gaiman's inspired by those stories but um he has said that this book took him longer than any other book that he's ever written to write and i think you can tell when you when you read it it's so like well put together and crafted there's no there's no fat Mm -hmm. um to talk briefly about the film uh my favorite band of all time basically which is they might be giants yay they are doing the music yes so (laughs) i'm excited about that (laughs) I'm excited too. Yeah, they're they're probably gonna like score it, which I yeah. believe is a first for them. I mean so. that that right there is pretty much why it's made why this book has made it onto this show because uh, there's nothing more geeky than a combination sure. of Tim Burton, They Might Be Giants, uh, the claymation going and a on. book, exactly, <laughs> and book. a comic. There's also a comic book. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of like a little kid again reading it. <laughs> yeah. So heads up to everybody, this yes. is like a geek explosion. This film. Yeah. Anyway, that's Coraline. And before we close out our, our show, we always like to get a little nostalgic. And uh, this week, I want to take some time to give a shout-out. We all know that GameStop is basically ruling the video game store market right now. Yes. But there was a time before GameStop, and uh, I'll, I'll let you go first. Who do you want to shout-out to? Well, you got to start with Babbage's, named after Charles Babbage, the sort of debatable inventor of the computer. Yeah, they had a plaque um, with his head on it outside of the store. So uh, rest in peace, Charles Babbage, keeping it real. The most notable feature of a Babbage's store are the two preview televisions out front. You know, we didn't have, like, the Internet or, or many magazines to tell us right. about games. So it was kind of up to, like, chilling out in front of Babbage's until maybe some new game popped up on that screen and, and was previewed there so we could see it in action. And Shoot, what was the uh, the store in the South Hills 
that closed and then there was like a note posted on the door that was like apparently the management doesn't give a rip or something that's some like angry letter and then it turned into like an einstein's bagels um Um, egghead yeah egghead egghead software that place was run by an angry man yeah he uh we would go in there and start to mess around on the computers and there were there were games on there and he would just be like hey this this isn't a video arcade exactly like the comic owner who says this isn't a library it's like well aren't these computers here to use or yeah no okay you you loaded games onto them it's not a mistake. Right. And then, of course, we have to shout out to Electronics mm-hmm. Boutique. I can still remember that was the first place I saw a, uh, a 3 do and a, an Atari Jaguar running Aliens vs. Yeah. Predator. And I was just, like, blown away because those systems were unattainable. Right. 64-bit. 64-bit. That's insane. One place that I kind of have to give a shout out to are the independent game retailers, especially Dr. Games. Yeah, I- so I don't even know where in Ohio. But we, we took this like family vacation. The whole purpose was to be disconnected from society. So no television, no phone, <laughs> nothing like that. And but we were so bored. I remember we brought our yeah. Genesis, and uh, which, which we, we owned no, no games, games for. for. I mean, and this is a strategy that a lot of yeah. people use now, which I think is wise. Is just buy the system and rent the games. You know. Anyway, we uh, we brought our Genesis and we went down to the local like mini mall. They had an arcade, yeah, and Doctor Games, which was like this little. They had a, everything to rent there: Sega CD games, uh, uh, rented Rebel Assault, Star Wars Rebel Assault. That's right. Assault I think we them. spent our vacation playing Rebel Assault. Exactly. There was a lot of games to rent there, and it wasn't just a rental store. Like you could buy the the, the rented games and, and get them cheap. There was a. I, I remember there was like this manager guy there who was like. Doctor Games, how can I help you? You know, when nerds are given managerial positions, they turn right. into this man. <laughs> exactly. Um, but it's no longer there. Sad. Neither are a lot of these other ones. And do you think that the current incarnation of these places makes any sense, or is it just like pointless? You know, I mean, Halo Three, I got at Walmart with no fuss. Well, it's, it's good to have a specialty shop with something like this, because, like, there is in fact a independent video game store uh, in downtown Philadelphia right. that I've gone to, and what's amazing about that place is you can find the most obscure things there, like uh, a Famicom duo system oh, wow. with, uh, you know, like some sort of Street Fighter 3 8-bit edition or some yeah. sort of, like, weird thing, just... Dreamcast games and everything you need is is still there and the Japanese releases of certain Sweet. titles you know so as long as they have an edge like that let the masses descend upon Walmart and Best Buy but you know for the people who just they got to get the re-released you know Wii version of Okami right. hopefully they'll have a store like Babbage's to to back them up there you go. So that is our show for this week. Thank you for listening. If you would like to send us an email, you may do so. Our email address is mail at growing-up-geek.com. Once again, my name is Brad. And I was here before you rose, and I will be here when you fall. Nice. Thank you, Coraline. And we'll catch you next week. <laughs>